Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I am Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, and this is episode 59. I am trying a little bit of a change up this week. I'm going to have a lot of information at the end, and I'm going to go right to the news in the beginning. I think this format is going to work. It's something I've been preparing for quite a while. And I've got some features that I'm going to fit in to different places in this particular episode. Today, we're going to have the news, we're going to have a feature which is going to be based on the Star Citizen manuals, and then we're going to go right into what's on Sandy's Facebook. That's supposed to be followed by an expose or some kind of org time for one of the organizations that are out there. So if you're part of an org, get me your information and I'll feature your org here. Then we'll have closing comments and that will be the show. So on with today's show. In the news this week, we have quite a bit. The first thing is that Star Citizen is going through a period of tuning the different portions of the game. Arena Commander most recently came out with version 1.0. We know that the first person shooter module is gonna be out soon, but they're going to continue to tweak the Arena Commander module to make it better. Less problems with the, um, I guess you could say, to make it a more stable, environment, and then they're going to do some balancing of the different weapon systems and ships that are in the game. Little by little, they're going to enhance the actual Arena Commander with version 1.0 coming out, well, sorry, 1.1 coming out later this month or early next month. This week, however, we should be getting a balancing and bug fix patch of version 1.01. So what should be in that patch? Let's get right over there and take a look at it, okay? So the things that are going to be in this patch are going to be more, um, they're going to be bug fixes and balance issues, and they're going to be getting some more stuff into the Voyager Direct store. That's a pretty decent thing to do, but Arena Commander credits don't come out until version 1.1, which will be out later on. So even though they're going to be upgrading things inside of the Voyager Direct store, please do wait for them to start offering Arena Commander credits in the game. Now in version 1.1, we're gonna have more fixes, we're gonna have the Gladius, we're gonna have AC credits and more balancing. Now there are there is a lot of things going on in the game right now, and I wanna just take a look real fast at what has been added or implemented in version 1.0, just in case you haven't learned. This is gonna be a brief description of something that happened about a month ago, which is the release of Arena Commander 1.0. Now, Arena Commander 1.0 may be played by most of us, but I do not know how many of us are actually engaged in playing it every single day. I would say that it's a fair amount of people, but most of the most highly dedicated people will be the ones in there. But for those of us that are not really in the game every day, I just wanted to go over a couple of brand new things that are in 1.0 and are being improved as time goes on. The first thing, please tune in later on for when I talk about the manual, which will be one of our features today. New ships, you have all the Auroras, all the Mustangs, and quite a number of other ships like the Hornets, and we'll just leave it at that. There's a lot more ships. Cross-grade upgrades, or cross-chassis upgrades, were improved, and you now have charts that will get you from A to B. In this situation, if you had an Aurora LX, you would be able to move to either one of these and then continue down the pipe until you actually got to the one that you wanted to purchase. So if you started with an LX that was LTI, you would upgrade to an LN, cross upgrade to a Beta, upgrade to a CL, cross upgrade to a Gamma, and then upgrade to a Delta. It's a lot going on there, but that's essentially the way to retain LTI on any ship that you want to upgrade to another ship. Now going from Mustang Delta and up, I don't know if there are cross chassis upgrades yet, but do expect more of these to happen in the future. There have been some new components and there will be newer components coming out as well with version 1.1. The version that's coming out this week, 1.01, will have some minor updates to the components. But please do not visit Voyager Direct unless you're trying to buy these for the Persistent Universe, which will not be out for some time, as very shortly in version 1.1 you will be able to make Arena Commander credits to buy the things that are in Voyager Direct. Public Test Universe went live today, and this is something that came out in the 
version 1.0 of Arena Commander. There have been massive changes in the HUD. Zane continues to show why he is such an important member of the team, creating brand new HUD designs for each one of the different ships. I think this is one of the things that definitely will set this space sim apart from others. As we go down here, missiles continuously gets tweaked and will be tweaked again in 1.01 and 1.1. The ability to track, the ability to evade, and the ability to launch missiles and the damage they do is all being worked on and balanced on an ongoing basis. The signature system is where the detail starts to come in. The signature system is based on signature to noise ratio and this whole feature over here describes the signature system. Now for this to be understood fully you're going to have to go back to the manual and like I said stand by later for the manual and the feature that I created for that today. With that said let's get back to the show for some more Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. That is quite a big deal that's been added into it. And the manual has been enhanced, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But just the fact that they're building the realism of this game at such an, a, a rapid pace, it's starting to show me that this is definitely something that I am going to like or love to play. I look back to my early years of gaming, or not so early years, and games like Falcon, Falcon 2, Falcon 3, and then Falcon 4.0 that came with a manual that thick, how to use the radar, were my favorites back then. And from time to time, I dabble in DCS World, which is a very highly realistic combat simulator, which I used to say aircraft um, flight simulator, but now they have ground forces in it, and they also have things like helicopters in it, so it's a little bit more vast. But I'm very excited about what, the way that this particular product, this particular game, is starting to move. So we also have some things that came out of the Reverse the Verse and Around the Verse last week. They are going to be updating the web page, and yes, there's a lot that's changed on it already, and they're going to start tuning it a little bit more deeply. And as you'll find out in this week's Five for Ben Lesnick, I have changed the name of that show. I think Five for the CM or Five for the SCM just doesn't show people that are out there what exactly the show's about but it's five questions for Ben. I found out that they are going to start taking that page and turning it from something that's geared towards the outside world and turning it inside out and start gearing it more towards what's going on inside of the Star Citizen universe. There'll still be outside universe pieces to it, but they'll be moving forward with that. Now with that said, that means that on the real life part, they're gonna be doing some updates also. One of those updates is going to be stretch goals. We haven't had them for a while. We should be getting a big one coming up real quick with $70 million. We're already at 69. But it was stated that they're going to go back and they're going to redo the whole stretch goal page with progress on each one of the stretch goals, giving us how far into it they are or if they've been completed. Or in some cases, if they've been altered or changed in any way to accommodate more features of the game that weren't going to be in the game when that stretch goal was actually announced. Um, there's a lot of things that are in those stretch goals that may hit that particular piece. All right, so this week we have two things going on. Tonight, which tonight is Monday, and by the time you see this, it should be Wednesday. Sorry, tonight is Tuesday. By the time you see this, it should be Wednesday. Chris Roberts will be at BAFTA, and he will be speaking at 7.30 p.m. tonight. So that will be live streamed on Twitch. I will have a link to whatever the, um, I guess, the highlight is or maybe the recorded version of that on YouTube in the show notes at some point in the bottom of this. Tell me what you thought of the speech by Chris Roberts and leave a comment below. If you feel that that comment that's left by one of my viewers is cool or not, please leave a thumbs up or whatever. I'd like to know what your ideas are and what you think that, you know, and how you feel about his speech went. Later on this week, we already have three people inside of the Austin area. I think Chris was there while well, Chris is at BAFTA. You have uh, Will, James, 
and well sorry you just have James and Ben over there right now and there's a lot going on there they're going to be um, taking a little bit of time to see what's going on inside of the Austin office they're going to be doing around the verse from Austin this week and then they're off to PAX South and at PAX South they're going to have a town hall meeting and a couple of other things going on but none of that is going to be live streamed now, Sandy stated that the live stream cost was exorbitant this time, and there just wasn't enough bandwidth to actually get it to, for them to actually provide themselves with a feed for this year's live stream. So that is something that will be recorded and put up on CIG's YouTube at a later date. I look forward to this one because there's a lot of things that are going on at PAX South, and one of them is actually going to be a little session about piracy in the game. And remember, piracy is definitely part of this game, but it doesn't come very easy. The minute you're a pirate, you're definitely wanted in all of the UEE space, so it's going to be difficult. And this is going to be one of those um, meetings to get together with the people that are going to be playing the game and start seeing how we're going to move forward with piracy in the game. Very excited about that. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now, and I'm gonna to go to my first feature. All right, so my first feature is gonna be based on the manuals that are gonna be inside of Star Citizen. I take a look back to the manuals that were inside of the Wing Commander universe and contrast them against what we already have and what we will be getting inside of the Star Citizen universe. And here's that first feature now. In this week's feature, I'm gonna to touch base on the brand new Pilot's Guide to Arena Commander but right after I go back in time and talk a little bit about Chris Roberts' past and how important the manuals were to some of those old games like the Wing Commander series Privateer, Star Lancer, and Freelancer. To begin with, I remember opening up that first box of Wing Commander 1 and pulling out the claw marks and just tearing through it and reading every page. Claw marks was unique. It dragged you into the game in such a delightful and wonderful manner that even before you loaded the game and started flying that very first ship, you felt like you were part of the crew and like you knew everybody that you were going to meet. The manuals themselves weren't these spectacular made, well actually they were, they were spectacular for what gaming was back then. You see me going through a couple of them right now. And this is just going through Claw Marks, which was that first magazine-like, wonderful manual. And I know I'm, I sound like I'm gushing over this. It was a long time ago. I mean, it was 25 years ago that this game came out. And this was the first thing that you had to look forward to. And you can go back and look at the table of contents, which we'll do right now, and you'll see some wonderful names like Chris himself, Aaron, and a lot of the other people that worked on this first one of Chris Roberts' games. Well, first one of his space genre games. Now, I can tell you this. There were many, many, many different games out back then. And a lot of them just went through the... Well, they, they connected the T's and dotted the I's and made a manual that pretty much taught you how to play. This manual, like I said, it, it created the universe that you were going to be playing in. Everything from stories about what was going on in the game, on the ship, stories about how all this started, why are we fighting, what are we doing, what is our purpose in life, what is our purpose here on the Tiger's Claw, to profiles of each one of the different pilots and each one of your adversaries. As we turn the pages here, we can see a lot of different things. Look at this. These were the actual ships, and they looked almost exactly like this in-game. Here are those profiles and weapon profiles I talked about. I just wanted to go back here and show you the ship designs. All right. Every single one of these people meant something. Their ranks. And here we go again, getting into the big part which was how to fly the ship that was presented more in the way of a flight manual than how to play the game. There was a keyboard shortcut card, I believe, but when you were going in to play the game, it was presented to you like this was actually your ship that you had to learn how to fly. 
And although all the ships shared the same controls, which will not be the case for Star Citizen, it still made for a very, very, very in-depth review, but at the same time, immersive review of what was coming up in the game. There were other pieces that you could go and find in some of the older games, like the Bible, the blueprints. The blueprints were amazing. Look at this. And they are going to be offering blueprints in the game now. You can find them in some of the more expensive packages, which probably means that you'll be able to, well, buy them in the store at some point. We're going into Wing Commander 2, showing off the same type of manual, and I think that's where I'm going to stop. Let's move on to the next piece, which is Arena Commander. Now, the Arena Commander manual can be found in the announcement for Arena Commander 1.0. And just like the previous manuals I just showed you, it starts you off in-game in this wonderful area or wonderful letter given to you by Tristan Blair. Of course, Blair is a throwback to Wing Commander. It gets right down and dirty, though, because you are in-universe, and you're in-universe playing this game. And the game is set up as part of a... Well, not part of. It's set up in such a way that the author is talking about a experience that they had while flying around in space on a transport, and what their experience was actually got them to make this game. Now, Original Systems is also a play on Origin, which was the publishing house that produced Wing Commander way back when. So let's take a look at the manual. So you're going to learn how to get in the game, learn what your controls are, learn the different types of games that you could play. This is contact management showing that brand new lobby system that was added into version 1.0. Again, here are the game modes. You have Battle Royale, Capture the Core, my favorite, Squadron Battle. Actually, my favorite is probably Cooperative Vanduul Swarm. And here are those profiles that I was talking about. The Vanduul, they'll go into the different types of ships that you'll meet or different types of clans you'll meet. And then they'll go into some of the elites that you'll meet. Remember, we used to stop at Reaper, but now we all go all the way up to Baron Vanduul. Pretty neat. There's a lot more in this manual, and it in every way draws you into the gaming universe as you go along. Take, for instance, this page that we're going to come up to now. The lower right hand side has an ad for a weapon that you'll be using in the first person shooter module. I think that's pretty awesome. But here we talk about the combat visor interface, and it's presented in-game. Not as the HUD in the game, but as this is what an actual pilot uses. And here you learn how to manage different pieces of your ship. Everything from weapons grouping to being able to set up power distribution and shield distribution. It talks about the controls still. You can set those up for all different keyboard commands or all different um, buttons on your joystick or HOTUS. Talks about the radar and about the displays and about what they mean. But in every way, it's doing it from an in-game perspective. The immersion of Star Citizen is not just the game itself, but it's the manuals. And I can't wait to see what the finished manual for the Persistent Universe or Squadron 42 will be like. And with that said, let's go back to the show. I know that I said it inside of the feature, but I really did enjoy reading that particular manual the first time I ever opened a box of Wing Commander. It was just amazing. And, and even before getting into the game and playing the game and reading the things that were going on on screen, I felt like I was part of the crew. I felt like I was part of that game universe. It is something that is, in the beginning, drove me to want to take part in the Star Citizen game. And I can't wait for the Squadron 42 game manual and the Player Universe manual to come out and see what kind of things they do with that. All right, this next piece of this week's show is going to be called What's on Sandy's Facebook? Now, this comes to me because if you ever look at Sandy's Facebook, every now and then she's just snapping off a picture of something she has on her monitor and putting it up on her Facebook and saying, what's this? What do you think of this? Oh, don't look at this. Or 
you know, they're just different things that are up there. So let's take a look at the last week of Sandy's Facebook. From time to time, Sandy will be posting things on her Facebook. Well, what she's actually doing is sitting in front of a monitor, snapping off a picture with her iPhone and uploading it to Facebook, and then putting in some cute comments asking us what we think about this photo. She's been doing this for quite a long time, and it's how we've found quite a number of the sneak peeks of art that get sent around the web for Star Citizen from time to time. So let's take a look at what else she has. This is what Terra Prime looks like. And this has been flushed out, and it's actually a 3D model, and they're doing a fly-through of it. I'd like to get your feedback on each one of the photos that she's posted. The next one is even more intriguing. It is stated that two men enter, one man leaves. And now that, of course, is a throwback to Thunderdome. This is going to be a mode for the FPS shooter where people will actually go and practice zero-G combat. I can imagine this being an arena for that also. So this is pretty cool looking. It looks like it's floating high above Terra. These happen to be some models of some buildings that will be on one of the planets. This is something that, of course, will change over time, but look at the detail. Look at the level of, well, just look at the level of detail. What is this ship? To me, is it a Carrick? Is it an Orion? A Hull C? Is that the Banu Merchantman? That's one of the ships that's currently in white or gray boxing. I'm not so sure where they're going with this one. But it is very intriguing and does have a nice look to it. Nice, sleek, ribbed look. Kind of like a spine on the outside, isn't it? Looks like a bunch of vertebrae. That can be a pretty cool looking ship if you ask me. Let's see what you guys think it is below. And of course, we're going into the next photo, which I went the wrong way over there. This is actually a model of the medic that's been gray boxed out. The detail work of all of the in-game characters is starting to rival games like Uncharted 4. And of course now, this is not in-game. This is just a picture of Sandy, so you know who we're talking about. Sandy is the vice president in charge of marketing. She is an amazing woman, has been on the show a couple of times, and I hope to have her on the show again soon. Thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you for another... What's on Sandy's Facebook next week? And now back to more Star Citizen AA. Now there's a little bit more to this than me just showing you Sandy's Facebook. I want to get some feedback on what you think each one of those are, or if she gave us, like, here's Terra Prime, and here's this certain station in Nix. I want to get your feedback on what you think of each one of those, especially things like, what do you think of the medic model? I think that these character models are becoming so lifelike, it's kind of eerie, but I just saw the graphics, the trailer for Uncharted 4 for the PlayStation 4, which will be on my PS4, and oh my god, that is so ultra-realistic, I can't wait to play it. But that's the type of things that we're going to see in this game, and I can't wait for them to capture my giant head <laughs> and put it onto one of the character models inside of Star Citizen. At least I hope that's what they have in mind for me. Don't know yet. We'll find out that at a later date. All right, guys, uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to me to answer on this show or any other, please send them to starcitizenaa at gmail.com. And if you just want to say that you like the show, remember to click the thumbs up button below. And that's all I got for you. So with that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon.